on Thursday, uh, for those that were at the food pantry, helping in Marysville, it was David, Larry, Pauline, and myself. And in Harvester's distributing food, David, Rhonda, and John were giving out food in Axel. So thank you for that work. It's a huge ministry that we provide. And it, it's always fun to hear, hear the stories. Yeah, thank you. And Jesse, thank you. <laughs> I didn't necessarily know. Um, I was I'm going to be here. We had a little plumbing problem in the house, so I was taking care of the plumbing, which they wanted to know if I had a dog. I don't have a dog, but we have still the remnants of dog here in the plumbing, so um, they had to come clean it out. So I was sitting with the with waiting on the plumber to get there. So. Um, we do want to hold this week in our prayers, uh, Dennis Rocky, Lola, his wife, or his mother, um, died on Monday. Her funeral will not be until October 3rd, um, that they will have the service of freedoms at 11 o'clock. They're not sure how they're going to do it for numbers of people and that kind of thing. So we'll have to kind of wait and see what the, what the arrangements start to look like a little bit as we go through um, this next week. You did receive by email, or you can pick up because it's a 12th page, a prayer guide. On September 26th in Washington, D.C., I wish I could be there, but there's a lot of reasons not to be there. I don't agree with that many people. Um, besides, I think, yeah. Um, it's called The Return, and part of it is Franklin Graham, and faith leaders from across all denominations are coming together. To say it is now time for us as churches, as church bodies, as people of God, to kind of get off our tails and we have to start to stand up and do something. We have to start to be the ones to pray. We can't just hope that someone else is going to pray us through the issues that we're in at this point. So there is, if you go on their website on the um, the return.org, you can find out about um, all, the comp all the talks that are going to be given. You can even listen to them to stream them. But it's a prayer guide uh, to pray for uh, humility, for turning away from evil, repentance, those in need of hope, the salvation of many, transformation, God's people to take action, and a final word about Kairos. I encourage you, and there's about um, 12 or 13 copies that I printed off. So if you don't want to print this, which I will tell you it takes a lot of ink. <laughs> uh, the front two pages are a lot of black. So if you want to take a copy of it, that would be fine. Uh, that's why I printed off some. I encourage us as we go through September 26th, through that Saturday, to really call ourselves to prayer as um, something I think we need to think about um, as a nation. And so I give you that as a uh, as reading material, but I think it's I think it's good. Uh, I think we do need to call ourselves and our country for prayer. You know, I, again, as I worked with people on um, Thursday, I was amazed at the stories we hear and the invitations that are given. In fact, um, I have a feeling I'll have a visitor. A uh, young lady came after everyone else had left, of course, and Pastor Janelle and I were there, and so we got to, a chance to really talk with her. She used, her aunt lived in the, I think it's Jeff's house out of Cindy Jones, because they always got my mail and her mail confused. And we were talking about where the church was, and she said, oh, that's that really pretty church that I really want to stop in, in a beautiful house, and I really want to stop. Because I, when I went to my aunt's, I always drove by. I think she'll be here someday. You know, we'll keep praying for her as she's making her journey as well. So there is there there are moments that we all have that we touch lives, and we're going to continue to hear about that. So uh, pick up one of the prayer guides if you like, and like I said, you can go online and look at all the information. There's a bunch of videos and that kind of thing as well. Um, for us to use as we do think about how we pray our nation into health again 
instead of into conflict. Because uh, last night, two more police officers in LA were at point blank, blank range uh, shot, both in critical condition. Rioters would not let them get into the hospital. It's wrong. It's wrong what's happening in our country right now. But we're the ones that make the change. And with nothing else, we do it by prayer. And so we're going to lift our prayers that way. So, okay. I don't know of any other announcements right now. I think everything else is in your bulletin um, as we move through, move, move through our time together. So let's stand. We'll begin with our confession. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained servant of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will sing, Guide Me Ever Great Redeemer on page 343. <laughs>
and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is 
must not despise those who abstain. And those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on the servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld. For the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. This, those who deserve, those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves. We do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For it is, it is in, for to this end, Christ died and lived again. So that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall praise to God. Give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. This is the end of the lesson. <laughs>
hoping to get away with seven times. Well, that would be kind of like seven cards that if I say, I'm sorry, 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 I'm sorry. we can forget about it. Nah. Jesus doesn't say that we can forget about it. In fact, you're going to have to say it again and again and again. I got a mess. And again and over and over and over. That's kind of what God's love is all about. Now we can't say I'm sorry once and think it's over and done with. But instead we say it over and over again. And we let God's love and grace fall out. Just like the cards did. And they surround us now. That's how much love God has. That's what we're supposed to do. Is kind of make a mess of cards, maybe. Make a mess and slaughter all over the person you've had to apologize to. Because God loves us that much. Amen. Thanks, guys. I'm keeping up for now. I know you're all good, but maybe. Let us pray. Father, we are sure in your word that judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. But if we forgive others when they sin against us, then you will forgive us as well. For in the same way we judge others, we will be judged. And with the measure we use, it will be measured to us. So, Father, right now, we release into your hands those who have done me wrong, done us wrong. We open the door of the debtor's prison that we have held them in, and we set them free. And we ask in Jesus' name that you will set us free from the torment of bitterness and unforgiveness. Oh, God, help us to walk away in freedom and to never look back. Amen. You know, it's interesting that Peter, in the first couple of verses of our reading, and Peter is really concerned. He wants to know, how many times do I have to say, I'm sorry? He really wants to know the numerical number that he can put on it. That is what Jesus was concerned about, though. There's not a numerical number because really this lesson is about a divided community. I feel like maybe in the world we live in right now it is so divided that we are as well in a divided community of not knowing how to be in a relationship with each other. Maybe, maybe, these cards are representative of where you and I are in our journey. Is it hard to have to say I'm sorry? Is it hard to say I might have been the one to mess up? And what Peter was wanting was an easy way out. Hey, Jesus, just tell me, if I only have to say I'm sorry seven times, I'm going to stop there. I'm not real worried though, Jesus, about my own heart. Because I can mouth the words, I'm sorry, over and over. And yet, that isn't, that isn't what Jesus wants. Jesus answers, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. It is about, and that becomes a perfect, perfect number. 
when we count our sevens, and seven we know is the perfect number that Jesus uses, and we use biblically over and over again. In other words, that we can't say it enough. We cannot say I'm sorry enough until we open our hearts and let our hearts be cleansed from God. The words that we mouth are not the words that Jesus needs. Oh, they're important. But that's not where Jesus needs us to be. I find it interesting that the rest of this is really Jesus and Peter are having a conversation in the first part. This last part was very much about a Gentile. And we have some pretty good reasons. We know that this was not to the Jewish community, but to a Gentile. But they were Gentiles. We have a couple of reasons we know that for sure. One is the amount of wealth that the king had. He was very wealthy. That would not have been of the Jewish tradition, would not have had the wealth. So we're pretty sure that this would have been, from a Gentile king's perspective, the second part is that he was worshipped by a slave. That would not have happened. Jewish slaves did not worship their kings. It was not possible. And third, well third, the Jewish law prohibited wife and family being sold into slavery. Now, we can go backwards and look in Genesis at Abram and Sari if we want to know how that relationship was, where Abram gave Sari to the king and said, you are my, let him know you are my sister, not my wife. As part of the Hebraic law, that was acceptable, that they would not have been a slave under the same terms. So Jewish law didn't pro prohibit or prohibited that, and a Jew could not be imprisoned and tortured. So it was probably a Gentile that was having this conversation with a Gentile king. This was probably not Jew to Jew, or a, a Gentile to a Jew, or anything. It would have been Gentile to Gentile king to. But it's about. You know, reconciliation is what this lesson ends up being all about. And it's the hardest part for a, in a community when one person has been robbed. I mean, I have to tell you, oh, the, rumor, the rumor's in town. I mean, if someone does something wrong, or something, in someone's perception something has been done wrong, the, the little grapevine, whoop, whoop, dog. Oh, it's pretty good. I mean, between Frankfurt and Axel, and then when we put in Marysville, oh my goodness, the grapevine is huge. And the bad will always spread more farther than the good stuff that happens. Always. We are called. And I think that's part of this prayer, calling us and recounting us and bringing us to prayer by the, in the return is what it's really helping us to understand is that we have to start to say, I'm sorry, and let our love of each other, no matter the circumstances, reach out. Because I have to tell you, friends, we all fall short. There's not one of us that's leaving here without having had boo-boos and mistakes, have been misunderstood, and have maybe even said words that were not the words that we would have hoped someone would have heard. Now, we can be misunderstood, for sure. Jesus called for us today, and the point of our lesson is about that the love has to be so, so large to cancel every debt that we have. And each of us have those in our lives. We each 
should have the times we maybe said, I'm sorry, we think enough times and I'm going to shut the door and say, I'm not going to mess with it anymore. I'm done. Why should I worry about it? They have to take the next step to come to me. That's human. But it's not right. It is that we have to consistently and let that love cancel the debt, whatever that debt is that we're holding on to. We often, as humans, I think, want to hold on to our grudges. We want to hold on to the stuff that breaks us and that hurts us. We want to hang on to and we're going to be real quick to tell everyone about. But maybe though, we need to back up and maybe we need to go to the cross and say, you know God? Yeah. It's me. I'm the broken one who can't move beyond the hurt and the pain, the agony and the distance. But God, cleanse my heart that I may cancel that debt, that I may say with all honesty, my heart is open now to you. Come, let's renew the relationship. You know, churches, churches, are bad, bad about holding on to, holding on to a past history and a past story of wanting to just tell, you know, back then when that pastor did or that person left because they were just mad about whatever. Maybe that's not the approach. Maybe what needed to happen is in the, in the moment to be able to say, hey, I think it's kind of like last week's lesson. Maybe we need to talk to how do we rebuild. What did I not hear you say? What did I need to apologize for? Maybe I didn't even know I said something. I mean, how many times have, have you ever had that happen? Where you didn't realize you said something that offended someone? Oh, I have. And then I find out the other grapevine, and it's like, uh, that's not what I said, or at least what I thought I said. Or, wait a minute, let's put it back in context to what we were talking about at the moment that someone maybe overheard me say. Have we ever done that? Oh yeah. We all have, all of us. We've all been guilty and it's not just churches. It's in all groups that we're part of. We've all had that happen. God here though says very clearly, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you. Unless you forgive your brother from your heart, we are called to have mercy. We are called to say, I'm sorry. We are called to over and over, maybe pick up our cards and maybe have to say it again. Maybe I have to pick them up again and say it all, all over. I'm not supposed to do it yourself. <laughs> but maybe getting hit in the head is what we need to do sometimes. Maybe that's God saying, hey, I need you to look at what you've done. I need you to look at yourself and then others. How do we pick up that one 
that may have been wounded. It was like the picture that's in your that was in your weekly this week. That was such a cool Saturday morning. I opened up the side door and went out on the porch and that well it was such a weird color. And that's what I noticed first on um, Saturday morning was the color and I looked out and it's like I took that picture and it was really eerie. I mean that picture was eerie of the church and the sun and the all the fog and everything that was across it. And it's like I said in my note, what didn't strike me until I sat down to write were the leaves in the front. I was focused on a bigger picture and hadn't looked at the front. How many times do we get caught up in our stuff? That we're thinking about the back end of something and forgot about what maybe happened on this end. Who did we forget? Who did we leave behind? Who did we wound? I'm just not saying I'm sorry. Who needs that phone call? Who needs to hear the story of God's love? know who those people are. You know how to rebuild those relationships. That's what this lesson is about, is how do we as a corporate, how do we forgive? How can we not be under the, the control of the sinful act that we have suffered? And how can we be made new to laugh and to share the joy that he's given us. Amen. We will sing hymn number 126, where charity and love prevail.
prayers to the church, the world, and all people in need. Lord God, we pray for our country, for those living in the midst of fire and destruction. Keep people and animals safe. Be with all who are called upon to work for fire crews, for EMS crews, for all in harm's way. Be with all the people in California, Oregon, Washington, Arizona, Colorado, and all other states that are experiencing untold loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For God, pray, we ask for each of us that as we remember what happened 19 years ago, the untold loss of life and industry, continue to be with families who struggle to understand but hold each of us close in this time and day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we begin to look forward to a renewal of faith, be with us this day. Let us each rise up and hold fast to the truths of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh Lord, for all people in this time and all parts of the world, let there be peace ringing out for all to hear. Let us stand together with each other in order to share your hope and life with the many. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that you be with all in our community, those who serve, those who work, those who are learning. Continue to draw us to you in order that we may live the life you have called us to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask you to be with our farmers this day. Let us harvest is beginning to give them safety in working around machinery and in the fields. Give them a profitable crop this year and let them continue to bless your fields. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, I do ask that you be with those who are need healing this day for Stan and Lily and all others that we hold in our hearts and our minds. Also be with the family of Dennis Brogy. Hold them in this time of loss, the loss of Lola. We know she is with you, but give this family love and support. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Precious God, you are an amazing God. You inspire us, you call us. You bring us together to be your children. You ask us and send us into the world, though, it is often hostile to your words. Let us be the light in the midst of darkness. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For I is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. How we remain standing and sing created me.
gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you, God.